everyone, my name is Kimberly and welcome to another day on Ray of Joke. Hope you all are staying healthy, well, and blessed. Uh, I tend to use this platform to discuss different topics related to perceptions and behaviors around personal growth and overall wellness with the goal being to promote a well-rounded relationship with both of these um, areas in our lives. So if this kind of content is right up your alley, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'd love to welcome you into the Joe K community so we can grow on this journey together. With that, let's get into our topic. Do you ever feel drained after a long day of meetings or classes? Um, or maybe you're feeling like really good and full of energy after a good workout. Well, if you haven't felt those things, I've definitely felt them on different occasions. And all I have to say is you are experiencing the beauties of energy transfer. So one thing I have to say about energy is that it is pretty much the law of this universe. It's the greatest constant. It's life's governing currency. And even the law of thermodynamics um, says as much. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. Now we're gonna be t talking a lot about where we put in our energy and why this energy transference matters. The easiest way to think about energy in this manner is how we express emotions or feelings or the moods that we either internalize or we exude. It's kind of like breathing in a way. You exhale, you inhale. The same thing kind of happens with energy where you externalize it and internalize it. As far as being able to recognize when we're exuding certain energies and internalizing them, we also have to really keep in mind ways to better safeguard um, our personal zones of energy and, you know, better protect where we're putting our energy as well because um, depending on what we do with it, it can make us more susceptible or vulnerable to energy depletion. The reason I want to talk about this is me personally, I've had a great experience of being an emotional sponge over the years and it really took me a long time to become aware of that fact. Just to kind of explain what I mean by emotional sponge, I have a very acute empathetic nature. Uh, I'm very acutely aware of different moods people have or feelings, even in places that I step into, I can kind of get a general feel um, that places or people give off. And I thought for the longest time that everyone was like that. So sometimes when I would get into conversations with people about just some of the things I was feeling and experiencing, I would, I thought that, oh, okay, you know, this person gets it, they understand it, and the more I talked with people, I realized that that wasn't the case. And I think the more and more that you realize that you're a little bit more acutely aware of these different types of things, you almost begin to develop some sort of defensive mechanism to better safeguard your energies. And I don't want to lean on the fact that this is automatic because it's not necessarily the case. It's still something that needs to be practiced. I think innately you just, you know, just find some sort of coping mechanism to better deal with the world around you. So oftentimes people like have asked me like, why don't I like get visibly upset or visibly angry? Not to say I don't get annoyed, not to say I don't get angry. It's just, I know in my heart of hearts what that energy transfer would look like if I were to readily express all the time intense emotions. It can be very, very draining. And being able to process through that, I have a way of dealing with what I need to deal with without maybe visibly throwing a tantrum. I also want to preface that um, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. Like there's some benefits to being like this. You know, you're able to better connect with people. Um, you can build stronger relationships this way. And 
while you know over time you may get to know someone's mannerisms you get to understand who they are how they react it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that you have to have a strong connection with someone no matter what having a strong connection with someone will help but more so it's like you're you're you've become more aware of what a person's feeling and they they may not necessarily be that close to you you're able to readily empathize with people connect with people because you know or have an idea of what's kind of what they're feeling not to say that you know exactly what they're going through because no one i think can really claim that but it's like you can kind of sense where they're at and be able to better engage them so they can feel a comfort in confiding in you on whatever they're feeling. The cons of this are that it can easily drain our energy stores if we're not too careful because maybe we're exuding too much in efforts to, you know, help um, empathize with others, help others heal. It can also make us very susceptible to certain intense energies, especially negative energies, and we might not be well equipped to be able to protect ourselves from that. Oftentimes, I've gone into a situation where I might have been feeling, I guess, content or fine, and then it's like you feel really intense rush of intense anger because someone around you is just it's brooding, you can sense it, and so it begins to take a negative toll on you, and sometimes you don't even know if that's the other person's feelings and mood, and you think it's yours, and it just causes so much confusion. And it's happened to me quite a number of times. And so that's why, for me, I've had to like really hone in developing some sort of protective barrier in a sense to better safeguard my energy. This doesn't just apply to highly acute empaths as far as um, safeguarding our energies, knowing that we can run into uh, depleted energy stores if we're not too careful. Like all of this can apply to anyone in actuality, um, even though it's on a higher level for acute empaths. We all possess energy, so you know, the similar cons and pros apply. As far as what these energies can manifest themselves as, um, it can be feelings, re gut reactions, but almost always there'll be things that we can't readily explain away with pure logic alone. Not to say that they can't be explained with some logic, but it's like you it's harder to explain the basis of a feeling versus you have hard facts to back up some of your claims. This is something that you can't really see. This is something that people, other people can't really see. So sometimes it's harder to explain away with just only logic. And if you're still having trouble understanding this, think of it as like the spidey sense, you know, um, like Peter Parker has the spidey sense or the Peter tingle. I always thought that sounded like Peter Parker had to use the bathroom, but I think that was the point. But you know, I digress. I would say that if you do find yourself maybe more susceptible to other people's energies, um, they can leave quite an impression on your personal energy. And I want to discuss maybe some of the ways that it can do that. Um, it can be toxic energy or it can be positive energy. I say toxic opposed to negative because almost always it will have a very adverse effect on you. Being around it for any given period of time can begin to have a toll on your mental psyche. So that's kind of why I use the term toxic opposed to negative. When it comes to dealing with energy that you're around, whether it be toxic or positive, you're either going to exert more to put yourself in a better place or you're going to have a good like positive investment of energies to create a balance. What I'm talking about um, maybe can be best explained in relationships. If you feel that they're putting less energy into the relationship versus you who's putting more, you can feel very tapped out very quickly 
because you're putting in all this energy and you're not really getting fed that same level of energy from the other side. So you're going to be exerting more than what's being invested in. On the other side, you have um, more meaningful relationships where there is a balance of energy transfer. You, you both like invest in and um, internalize. Like there's some some balance flow of energy that makes the whole experience positive. Some of the consequences that come with not safeguarding yourself, especially if you're very susceptible to these different energies, like being used sometimes. You're putting in a lot of energy into people and unfortunately, not everyone has the best of intentions. So oftentimes you feel like you're being like used up of your energy and that can create a lot of negative feelings which you internalize. It can lead to also just the feeling of isolation. And again, like what I said before, um, because you can have such an acute empathetic nature for reading people, that's not something that everyone can really understand. So you're already kind of like, how do I best explain myself to people in a way that they get it? and. A lot of people just don't get it. Another thing is also just you tend to sometimes shy away from certain stimuli that would cause you to have just a harder time differentiating between your emotions and other people's emotions. Mainly when it's intense negative in emotions. You tend to want to stay away from that and isolate yourself just because you want to be, you want to know that it's your own emotions that you're dealing with, not um, the influence of someone else's emotions on you. But also bottling up hurt feelings. You know, like I said before, you're kind of a little, you feel a little isolated just because of your nature, but then also you're shying away from maybe certain interactions just to be able to better process your own emotions. But sometimes, due to some of those previous interactions, you might end up bottling certain feelings and that can lead to emotional turmoil um, inside that you're, you don't really know how to best deal with. So certain things that um, I personally did with strengthening this like energy barrier, it sounds almost like a superpower, but I guess in a way it kind of is. The way that I did um, this to just better safeguard my energy, like I would picture in my mind this almost like ball of light, like expanding beyond myself. I guess in a good example to think about this is you mix Twilight's Bella Shield with Harry Potter's ball of light and then you get whatever the heck I'm trying to explain here. Not to say that it always works 100% of the time. And again, it's something that I've had to practice at, like to strengthen it. It's like a feeling that starts like deep in my like stomach or gut and then it just projects out through my body and then I just picture it in my mind projecting out around me. And that, that has been helpful, but it's also something that um, I've always had to work at. So if you end up developing a technique, know that you might have to hone it just so it's um, effective in the long term. There was an article I actually read recently um, that talked about different ways to better protect your energy. And again, this can be applied to anyone. So I shared my experiences, I shared what I've done. I'm gonna share some things that can help you to, you know, just better safeguard your personal energies. What the article mentioned was keeping your power. How I like to think about this is you give permission where you feel it's needed. No one has the power over your energy or what you invest into yourself. No one has that power over you. You get to say where you put your energy and really taking that level of ownership is actually a great form of empowerment. 
Another point that the article made was staying positive. The way I like to think about this is focusing on hope, focusing on potential. Uh, I think oftentimes people kind of misconstrue being positive or staying positive as blissful ignorance, which isn't what it's supposed to be. It's really about knowing that things can get better. Again, it's about focusing on potential, knowing that things don't always stay the same, things can improve, um, things have the capabilities to improve, and that's what it really means by staying positive. Another thing that the article mentioned was distancing ourselves from negative stimuli. Um, and they said ignore, but... <laughs> I think about that whole like ignore your bully type thing. I don't know. I I tried it like before and it just it never really worked that well. But in a way, I like thinking about that as distancing yourself from negative stimuli because you can you can do that. You can maybe physically distance yourself from whatever is toxic, whatever is the cause of the toxicity. You can distance yourself away from that. Um, don't acknowledge it. Like, you know, it goes back to that whole ignoring piece, but don't acknowledge it, don't engage with it. Just distance yourself from it. Like for me, I've been able to distance myself from certain individuals that while I may not be able to cut them off, I've been able to distance myself away from them to the point where I'm just keeping our conversation civil and that's it. I'm not going beyond that. I'm not investing like certain energies into the relationship. I'm just keeping it very surface level. Another thing that they mention is mind blocking negative stimuli. I should preface that they said giving the silent treatment. And again, this is, I think, a skill that has to also be built a little bit because it's it, it can be difficult, um, maybe doing that right off the bat. Uh, there are people that I know who are able to block people out very effectively. I personally like have a hard time doing that. Um, I know where my strengths and weaknesses are and my strengths is not in mind blocking. Um, I would say maybe I compartmentalize uh, <laughs> certain people um, in my mind so that way they don't have as much of an effect on me. But otherwise, mind blocking, um, you know, is a good alternative where you just completely block the person out. And it can be similar to distancing yourself from negative stimuli, but in this case, you're not really distancing yourself away. It's just a matter of the stim stimuli is there, you're just blocking it. Another thing that they did talk about was um, like following up on physical responses. This might be a little bit easier with people in person than it is on social media. While we can delete apps and all of that, we live in a very social media ridden world that it would be a little difficult to do with that. Not impossible, but difficult. I do wanna keep it realistic. I would say like being mindful of moving away from negative things, negative words, negative conversations, and moving closer to positive. So at least that negates whatever negative you might be coming across. Just kind of put yourself in a place where you're putting more positive into your mind than negative. It puts you in a better place. Um, it also puts back energy into you. Uh, I don't know anyone who can vouch that listening to a bunch of negative has made them feel more energized. It makes you feel like very angry or upset to the point where you exude that and then you just feel drained. Again, put more positive into your mind, put more positive around you. Don't give attention to negative stimuli because again, it's, it's not worth it. Using imagery and imagination. I have a very, very, very active imagination. Um, so I use that to my benefit. And I talked about what I picture in my mind. The imagination is something we all have. And 
quite frankly, I feel like it is sometimes very underutilized. So don't be afraid to maybe meditate on it a little bit and really dig deep in your imagination to picture what that protection looks like. Maybe for you it's a ball of light too, or maybe it's a place that you go to. That's actually another thing that I did just to cope with different like negative emotions. Sometimes I would just picture myself going to a place uh, that I would feel better or I would feel empowered in some way and that would help rejuvenate my energy. Maybe picturing that you're somewhere out in nature or even spending time in nature. Sometimes like I do that just to rejuvenate myself and you know sometimes you need to do that but with imagery and imagination specifically just go to your happy place. Imagine your happy place becoming that protection for you. Another thing that the article did talk about was removing negative energy. You can do this with breathing and um, imagery, like kind of putting those two things together. Breathing in and thinking of like positive things and then breathing out and imagining uh, the negative energy flowing out. Like I have done this a few times and it has helped when I just need to release that tension in, inside my body. And I like to associate colors with it. So like positive, um, maybe I would associate with like a bright yellow. The negative, maybe associating that with like a gray. So whatever that looks like for you to make it easier, you can do whatever you want. For me, it was bright yellow smoke and um, you know, grayish smoke. That w that was the thing. Like, I, I don't know why I came up with that. It just helped. Now, something that the article didn't necessarily talk about, but I think is really important to talk about is this idea of confronting. So they talk more about renew removing ne the negative energy or the negative stimulus, but they don't really talk about confronting. Like what if there are certain things that are just sitting with you and it's causing you to expel a lot more energy than needed. And you've done all of this, you've done the technique, you've done trying to ignore it, all of that, you've done it, but it's still sitting with you. What do you do? And I'm speaking from experience on this, and this is why I think it's important. I would say confront whatever the root cause is for those feelings that are sitting with you. I would confront it. Confronting does not mean going to pick a fight, okay? Like if it's a person, you should go and have a conversation about the person about whatever it is that is inside. You can't control what they they do or they say, um, unfortunately. But again, it's more about you getting that off your chest because likely it's sitting with you because you never had a chance to get it off your chest. So the, I want to say that the intention with walking away from that interaction shouldn't be with an ego that you put them down for whatever they did that didn't sit well with you for a long time, but rather you should come out of that interaction with a pride of knowing that you've grown it through that. You're now a better person for having done that and you can now move forward in life. Now say that person or stimulus, whatever it is, isn't something you can necessarily confront phys in the physical world, at least. Um, and I've had those instances too. Then I like to go back into my mind and kind of picture what that stimulus was for me. And again, using imagery, and then imagine myself having that conversation with that someone or, you know, finding a way to confront that something somehow. Confront it in your mind um, and then let it go. I'm speaking of to you about all these things. Uh, I know I meshed a lot of my experiences along with it. I'm, uh, I think it's just become a very integral thing in my life, uh, not just because of my nature, but also my experiences. So hopefully 
you know, you were able to take something away from the things that I've said. In case any of you are interested in reading that article that I was referencing, I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. It has some great points and I did do some additions just based on um, things that I've experienced that can hopefully help you in your journey to creating a better relationship and understanding of your personal energy zones, of that energy exchange with um, each interaction you have, with different people, different places, and hopefully make your journey all the more or better. Uh, so with that, I really hope this topic helped you and you feel more empowered on your journey. If you gained any value from the, this video, do hit the like button and feel free to comment down below. Like I really want to get a sense of different topics you may um, want me to talk on. Um, like feel free to comment a topic that you would like me to speak more on. I don't claim to be an expert in anything. Um, I can just, you know, offer my perspective, offer my experiences and hope that it helps. Maybe there's something in even previous videos that you want me to talk about too. Uh, feel free to say so. I, I don't consider a lot of topics to be off the table as long as they're relevant and in line with the mission of this channel. If you happen to be interested in following my journey up close, um, or are interested in any additional content on personal growth, feel free to follow me on social media. Um, you can find all my links in the description below. To all of my wonderful warriors out there, stay golden.